Good morning, everybody. John Delarose here, author of For Steam and Country, Gravity of the Game, and probably most importantly to our topic today, I have a nice short story in MAGA 2020 and beyond. This is a, uh, a compilation of short stories, essays about the future, about America becoming a utopia, Things are going great because President Trump just crushes it like he does everything because uh, that's what he does is win, right? And that's the title of my story in the book. Incidentally, it's called Winning is What We Do. It's in MAGA 2020. If you go on Amazon, M-A-G-A 2020, uh, you'll find it there. It's got it's got an essay from uh, Milo Yiannopoulos also. You know, everybody knows Milo probably who's tuning in to me at this point. Ivan Throne, a great uh, political strategist. You should be following him. His... Uh, his Twitter is at Dark Triad Man, and uh, and he's about he's one of the most interesting people on the internet. So that's uh, that 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 anthology came out last week on MAGA Day. I guess I don't need these headphones because it doesn't work. <laughs> they they came out on MAGA Day, and um, you know uh, did well. Obviously, uh, anything you know Trump pop culture is gonna gonna shoot up a little bit, and uh, we we had our little fun with that. It started, uh, you know, I got I got a lot less uh, flack from the SJW camp than I thought I would have. I mean, we got a we got a couple couple, you know, kind of randos with their nastiness, um, but we we didn't get much from their camp. They didn't they didn't really say much uh, on the topic. But I was just out yesterday. Um, I I spent all my Sundays uh, pretty much at church uh, almost the entire day. So I'm I'm at church from like 7 a.m. till um, till about noon. And uh, I got a got a notification. Somebody somebody sent me a message saying, you know, check out this thread, John. Somebody's somebody's attacking this anthology. So it looked like uh, we had a couple people in our anthology who were hustling hard. Uh, Don Witzke, Marina Fontaine, uh, Daniela Bova, great authors. They're they're hustling this book hard. They're trying to sell the book hard. Uh, and, and like, of course, you know, we come up with this Trump pop culture. There's only there's only two pieces of Trump pop culture in existence, to my acknowledge. There's there's Thump, the uh, children's book, which is uh, a a rabbit version of the campaign, and then there's MAGA 2020. There's there's nothing else out there. There's no other pro Trump pop culture out there. This is this is literally it. We are the ultimate punk rock. We are doing things that nobody else is doing. This is innovation. This is changing culture. We are the ones out there on the front lines. And of course, you know, we send it around to everybody in the conservative media. And the and uh, actually, you know, uh, I would say Marina and uh, and Daniela and Dawn did a lot more of this than than I did. Um, but nobody nobody picked it up. Not a single not a single element of the conservative media picked it up. Right. Yeah, I mean there were there were a couple miniseries back back in the day, but they did a, they did a bunch of that kind of stuff uh, back back uh, for Barack, and they did a bunch of stuff mocking mocking Sarah Palin and et cetera et cetera. Right? You don't get that. You don't get that on our side because all all these artists are lockstep in these companies. They're 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 in Marvel comics. They they've they've killed they've killed any arts at all in culture, Hollywood books, comics, art, anything good. They've killed, and all we've got is memes now, right? So all we all we have to fight that is memes, and memes are more effective than their than their garbage art. Uh, but but that's that's uh, that's another story. So the conservative media, like usual, didn't pick any of it up. They they love to whine. They love oh the SJWs are destroying culture. Uh, oh look at these degenerates. Uh, you know um, they love to whine, uh, and they get their clicks from whining about this or that and. Uh, and they don't do anything about it, though. They never help out. They never come on. They never. They never talk to anybody who's actually creating culture. They never pump anybody up who's creating culture. All they do is whine and flail and whine and flail. And that's uh, that's that's the National Review in a nutshell, right here. Um, I remember, gosh, the National Review was whining about uh, Star Trek 2009, um, you know, but they they never they never promoted any alternatives. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to make my own alternatives and promote other alternatives that are that are around me that I see that aren't going to be flooding uh, your mind with just degenerate nonsense with their with their content. 
And that's, uh, you know, that's how we, that's how we change culture and just make things better for everybody. Right. Um, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the best art in history and the best, uh, just, you know, the best, any content in history, it always came from a hard Christian background and it was, it was helped by the church. Uh, you know, the stuff that really lasts, uh, is, is something that comes out of, uh, comes out comes out of a strong nationalistic pride and a strong uh, a, a strong Christian pride and uh, and nothing else lasts and it doesn't last because you know it's the stuff we've got now is toxic but that's another story so this came out I guess uh, I guess Daniela yesterday uh, was was going and trying to get uh, some right wing commentators to actually pick this up like she's been doing for the last I mean they've been working hard guys working hard um, I, I've seen them every day out there. And nobody's touching it. Nobody's helping out. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody says a word. Nobody gives a retweet. It's just, it's, it's it's unbelievable, right? Um, it, it's uh, and and this doesn't just go for the old conservative guard like the National Review either. I mean the alt right folk. Uh, no, nobody's touched it. Nobody said a word about it either, right? So um, it's just been it's just been a wasteland of nothing. We've all been just promoting ourselves, and that's what we got got our fans everybody who's read my story at the very least has, has said it's, it's hilarious so you don't want to miss it um but when she, she tagged some people she tagged the national review on it i believe uh, i don't know if she tagged a couple writers she might have and uh the guy the guy came back and linked it and just you know he got he got really passive aggressive and just said hard pass well it's like you know okay hard pass boy you know i mean we're creating some fun culture out here and you're just going to be rude about it as your as your as your station as a as a quote conservative commentator, you know. So of course I look the guy up and he's got this like book of anti-Trump derp 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 derp. So you know you know it's it's, it's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, but you know I mean there's no reason for him to have gone full tilt angry at her for that. And it was linked to me, so I saw it and uh, I thought well well great they said this is how I work right I I see this and I say oh good the National Review is poo pooing our book MAGA 2020 this is fantastic so uh, so that means that means we can use this for promotion so I did and uh, I I got some comments I got a great one from uh, Morgan Newquist she's a she's a gal she she helps run a uh, publishing company with her husband they they do a great job great publisher they're called uh, Silver Empire Press. And, uh, she, you know, she chimed in on my, on my retweet of his retweet. You know, I just link, I just put the Amazon link on there and said, you know, buy our book. The national review doesn't like it or whatever. And she's like, you know, and she, and she commented, she's like, it's amazing how the conservative media never supports people who are actually creating art and who are actually creating content. They just, they, their, their first gut reaction is just to shun, shun the new, shun the people actually trying to fix the culture. And when you do that, and you're complaining about how bad the culture is. Well, I mean, the culture is only going to get worse because because you are never. I mean, it's, Hollywood's not going to give me a leg up. The publishing industry is not going to give me a leg up. They're not going to. They're never going to. They're never going to touch my work, no matter no matter how well it's selling, right? So I, I rely on, you know, the conservative media, maybe at least to do you know, be friendly, at least neutral, right? So uh, yeah, if you if you don't if you don't want to generate content, I mean that you've got a couple places to go and not 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 many many places else. Um, <laughs> so she made a great quote on that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know why this guy would be attacking his own side like this. And the guy chimes in from the National Review, I'm not on your side. It's like, okay, Mister, I mean, he like he just escalated it from hard pass to like, okay, we're high school now. I I wouldn't be associated with you. And I don't know who this guy is. I've never talked. Is Kevin Williamson or something like that? Never talked to him in my life. I just I just retweeted it with my Amazon link, and the guys the guys chiming in telling me I'm not on my side or he's not on my side. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm on the side of Western civilization and Christianity. So what side are you on? <laughs> what what do you want to win? <laughs> and you know, of course, I get nothing, right? Because the guy does, the guy doesn't have anything, right? They, he has his uh, my principles, but you know, his principles are. Who knows what you know he's not conserving anything he's not he's not fighting on behalf of uh anything i can see except for except for complaining about trump so whatever um but you know that that caused some stirs because you know you know people got got mad at me about that but you know, whatever you know i mean if the guy's going to come on to my page and go i'm not on your side you know when he's some big name writer with you know sixty thousand followers uh, derping at me, you know, I mean, well, at that point, at that point, it's fair game. They, the guy attacked me, he's being a bully, right? And so at, at that point, 
the guy subtweets me, of course, <laughs> and goes, uh, "What did he say?" He said, uh, "I should look it up. It was it was gold. This is this is just like comedy gold right here." I'm gonna look it up real quick, so I can so I can, I, I want to report. I want to I want to provide accurate reporting of exactly what the National Review said about me, um, which is pretty great. We still here? All right. In the meantime, while I'm loading Twitter here, because my, my computer gets kind of low, I'm going to grab my electrolytes. I'm doing the uh, the Tom Brady diet also. And the Tom Brady diet, you got to put electrolytes in your water. It helps you stay hydrated. Um, so I do that. Oh, man, my internet connection is not loading. All right. Well, whatever. So the guy said basically, um, the guy said... Electric lights are good. I'm, I'm putting the electrolytes in. I'm going to have a little sip of water. Yeah, got to stay hydrated, guys. All right. Um, especially when you're being attacked by the National Review, you got to stay hydrated. Be on your game, right? Um, so the Twitter the Twitter is not loading. Uh, the guy called me. What did he say? Uh, he, I, I can't even remember. Uh, how, I'm so bad at this. He, he said I was the end of the republic. That was, that was one of the things. Um, oh, here we go. All right, it's loading finally. She called me the end of the republic, which I mean, that is that what a what a like what a ridiculous subtweet that is by itself. Oh, uh, oh, I'm blocked now, so I can't even, I can't even see it anyway. <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> All right, I can't even see it anyway. Uh, okay, so he said he said this is what simpletons and the end of the republic looks like, or something like that. And <laughs> so he called me a simpleton, and then the end of the republic because I because I wrote a short story about Baron Trump in Iron Man armor. I mean, that, this is what it comes down to, right? So now he's blocked me because he's a low energy, low energy fighter, right? Um, so I, I use that for my marketing. I'm like, this guy's calling me a bunch of names. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, and, you know, it blew up again. And, you know, some people got mad at me. I don't know why, I don't know why people are getting mad at me. I'm not being mean to him. Um, but he's just being totally rude. And he came after me uh, after that. And then... Uh, that's somebody came in here. Sorry. Then, uh, then he, then he, then he, then he clarified it. He said, "Simpleton's a nice way of saying moron." So you know, he doubled down. He kept going. He kept attacking me. Kept being, kept being terrible to me, and uh, <laughs> and then that's that's what we had. So, um, so now now I've been attacked by the National Review. It I, it's kind of surreal. I you know this is uh, I I couldn't have imagined. Like why? Like I, I mean, there's there's way better things for this guy to be doing, uh, and, and way better people to be fighting than me. I mean, I have no idea why this guy wants to fight me, uh, but it turns out, you know, after after I, I actually had no idea who this this Kevin Williamson guy was, but it turns out most of my friends have actually had encounters with him. Uh, he's been rude to them all. Uh, this guy is just just a a cranky uh, sort of guy who just just seems to hate everything. So. Um, that's, that's where we're at this morning. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty surprised about that, uh, to be honest. I didn't think I'd, one, get the attention of somebody on the National Review, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and, uh, number two, I, di I didn't really expect, uh, the right to be attacking me like this. Kind of interesting on that front, too. That's good. Uh, on my front, it's going, it's going to mean I have a free marketing blurb again. This guy's called me a bunch of names. Most people don't like the National Review, and most people think they're stupid. So, it uh, it just it just does more for for my platform again, uh, <laughs> which which is where they really make their mistakes every time. I I can't believe these people come after me uh, on Twitter like this, in public like this, and just build my audience for me. I, it's like I don't even have to work because because they do it for me. It's pretty great. Um, it's surreal though. Um, I, I, I'm very, I'm still shocked. I'm still in a little bit of shock. I mean, I, I, you know, like I said, I was, I was out at church and then I'm out at a, uh, at a, a family barbecue after that. And I'm, I'm just watching as this comes by and I'm like, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is what all this does is lessen their influence. They've already got a low influence threshold at the national review. They, they, they went all in on Jeb. And what happened, you know, we all know what happened to Jeb. He was low energy too. He came out, Jeb came out swinging just like this too. He came out swinging and then he got hit back a little bit. And then he, then he, then he went home, you know, to his guac and, and, uh, and asking people to clap and that was it. Uh, and that's exactly what now we have from Kevin Williamson who attacked me hard yesterday for zero reason. And, uh, and, uh, as soon as I, 
as soon as I kind of tweet about it a little bit, well, here's the result. Oh, Journal of Opinion. Look at that guy. Blocked, low energy, right? Low energy guy. And that's it. So I win again. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, their their influence is diminishing. Nobody nobody wants to read their rag at this point. Uh, they don't they don't say anything that's useful. They're not they're not they're not relevant to the national conversation. They're not adding to anything. They're not promoting culture. Uh, but we are, and uh, and so that's that's uh, they they're they're scared of their dwindling influence. That's what it comes down to is these guys don't like their dwindling influence. And they, they see people like me coming up and they want to stop me from, they, they think they can stop me from gaining influence by, by, you know, poo-pooing me like, like their, like their audience actually cares. You know, my audience is younger, hipper, smarter, more internet savvy than theirs. So <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, all, all it does is benefit me, as I said, but it's bizarre. So, and uh, other bizarre news today, other bizarre news today, I guess GQ made Colin Kaepernick their, uh, their citizen of the year. I mean, you gotta give me a break. Um, you want to talk about irrelevant? So GQ's really apparently. Uh, here, here's this. Look at this garbage. Americ American hero. This guy. This guy can't even get a job. <laughs> look, Stephen Colbert. Yeah, I mean, you know, look. Uh, these these old magazines, and it's the same. This is the same thing as the National Review. These old magazines are so irrelevant. Nobody reads them. Nobody wants them. They're they're, they're not they're not producing content that's interesting, and they're not producing content fast enough for the modern game. And so they're all kind of going by the wayside. And so they do they do they do shocking things like you know the the uh, Kevin's got to attack be Mr. Attack Dog uh, for, for people on the right. And these people got to gotta try to use this as a controversy to try to try to get people talking about it because nobody talks about GQ because nobody cares. And that's it. It's the same, same thing, same old media. The old guard media is dying, and that is the lesson to learn here. So keep on trucking out there, guys. Keep on winning. Keep on having fun. And do check out MAGA 2020. It's very fun. I promise you that. Everybody who's read my story laughed. Everybody thinks it's hilarious. It is. I, I put in as much possible content for the meme maker and the shit lords out there uh, that I possibly could. So I, I, I made it for I, I made a story for the Internet, uh, for the Internet, by the Internet. <laughs> It's pretty good for the for the internet. By we need like an internet constitution or something like that to to replace the National Review, uh, and their and their constitution sort of principles, right? So, have a good day, guys. Uh, it was fun chatting with you, and I hope you enjoyed it.